everybody. This is L from Cultus Black, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Enjoy that shit, motherfuckers. Hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another interview. Today, I'm going to be interviewing L from Cultus Black. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm uh, excited to have you on the show. Um, let's just Thanks. jump into the first question. You could have seen this one coming. Uh, when can we expect the first Coldest, Coldest Black album? Oh, that's the question everyone's asking. And I wish I had an answer for you. Um, the album is finished. Um, we um, finished mixing, mastering, um, all that good stuff. Um, it was, uh, we actually just got the masters back from uh, Jeff Dunn um, not too long ago. He did um, a lot of work with uh, Motionless and White and a lot of bands like that. Um, but uh, either way, we got his masters back. They sound fucking phenomenal. But uh, we don't have a release date yet because, well, we're working on a lot of shit. We just, we just shot three different music videos. Uh, we're planning to shoot another one. Uh, we're compiling uh, kind of a package. And um, then we're going to shop that around and see what kind of interest we can get. Uh, we want to try to have a platform to launch from. Um, right. But if not, then, you know, we'll just fucking do it DIY as we've done since the start. So, but, you know, we want to see how, uh, how far up the flagpole we can run it awesome. and uh, see what we can get out of it before we release it. Um, yeah. We just don't want to release it on deaf ears. So, yeah. yeah. So you kind of want to build up like the anticipation now? Yes. Um, partially, but also uh, just, um, we're just trying to put a package together. Like we got the album done. We want to get uh, music uh, music videos done and uh, all the content put together so that we can have a, a kind of a 12 month plan of release. Um, but then on top of that, before we even do that, we want to shop it um, to uh, managers and to labels and to these sort of things um, just to, you know, see, see how, how far we can push it before we even release it. Basically. Awesome. And how did the, the band kind of get started and, and formed? Um, well, um, realistically, I was on tour with, uh, <clears throat> with the band Dope. And um, it started for me talking with Edsel Dope. And um, uh, we just were kind of bouncing ideas off of each other, of, you know, what would be uh, uh, kind of a cool idea for a band. And, you know, it went from there. Uh, it's been quite a while that we've been working on this shit. Um, I don't even know how long it's been now. It's been a couple of years. Um, but that just kind of goes to show you that, uh, you know, whenever you see a band that just appears out of nowhere, they don't really appear out of nowhere. It's, they've usually been working on this shit for years before oh, you yeah. ever see anything. And that's kind of the case with us. Um, it's been a couple of years that we've been plucking away at it. But um, yeah, it, it just kind of sprang from talks with him and uh, just ideas of, uh, what would be cool and different, you know, um, try to stand out a little bit, do our own thing. And uh, so there you go. Awesome. And I'm assuming you got to talk with uh, Dope through the Motor Grader uh, tour rings? Uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And what was it like doing vocals uh, with Motor Grader? Uh, it was interesting. Um, you know, I made a lot of connections through those guys. Um, but, uh, you know, in the end, I wanted to do my own thing. You know, I can't, uh, for one thing, I don't want to be in Ivan Moody's shadow forever. So right. um, I'm going to step out and do my own thing. And uh, so that's what this is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that because I just hate seeing comments on like uh, the new Motor Grader songs and just always comparing, you know, but that's kind of inevitable with that kind of that's stuff. That's just the way it is, you know, and uh, it's... <laughs> I hate to put it that way, but it's kind of, I see it as a stepping stone, you know, you get into a project like that and then you use that to build up a name for yourself and then you do your own shit, which yeah. is what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, else I wouldn't be here talking to you now. Yeah. You want to know who the fuck I was? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe soon though. Um, so imagine you're about to get in a fight. Uh, what song would be the soundtrack? What song would be the soundtrack if I was about to get into a fight? Yeah. Boy, you have some interesting questions. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Hurt, the Johnny Cash version of Hurt. 
because awesome. uh yeah that would be uh very interesting for a fight i would think very slow and painful <laughs> i can't imagine like a, a smoky sort of bar now <laughs> they're always smoky bars are yeah. always smoky. yeah well they're supposed to be um wouldn't have it any other way <laughs> Uh, and if you could get rid of the, you could get rid of one thing in the world, what would it be? Uh, COVID-19. <laughs> is that the generic answer? Is that, have you asked well, this question of other people? Yeah, well, nowadays, that's the answer usually. And I couldn't yeah. agree more, but uh, what if COVID wasn't there? What would it be then? Pants. <laughs> I would do away with pants. Why is that? Because I think that would make things a lot more interesting. You know what you're dealing with right uh, away. It, it would for sure make things more interesting. <laughs> um, and then are you a fan of uh, horror movies? Yeah, of course. What Could are some you of tell? Your, yeah, <laughs> kinda. <laughs> what are some of your favorites? Hmm. Okay, so... Um, Let's do this in tears. I would All say right. that so, uh, you know, uh, favorite horror movies. That's uh, it's really hard to say because, you know, there's so many good ones. But um, I'm just basic, my favorite horror movie for the, you know, for the mood, for everything. I always like to say The Shining. Um, I love that movie. Um, I love the isolation of it, um, the mood, um, you know. Uh, the whole thing is just awesome to me. Um, but then I also really like bad horror movies. And um, my favorite bad horror movie is Troll 2. <laughs> Classic. Yes. Um, I uh, am really into that movie. Um, I've seen it way too many times. I've watched the documentary on it. I fucking love it. Um, so, yeah, my favorite actually good horror movie will be The Shining. Favorite bad horror movie, Troll 2. I love them equally for different reasons. Yeah, I feel like with, uh, especially with the horror genre, it's kind of uh, always in sort of a tear. You know, you got movies like The Shining, um, but then you also have movies like, like you said, Troll 2 or uh, Frankenhooker, Maniac Cop, like the the really yeah. cheesy ones. But those yeah, usually are so entertaining. See, I, I, I like ones that are purposely cheesy sometimes too, but I really like the ones like they're fucking giving it their all, but they just fall short <laughs> and it is awful. Troll um, 2 is a perfect example of that. Yeah. Have you watched the documentary on that movie? I have not. I've heard of it though. You should watch it because it is mind boggling. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, just watch it. It's completely ridiculous. One of the guys that's in the movie um, literally was um, just like, uh, released like on leave or whatever for a few days from the psychiatric ward and just walked on the set for like a walk-on and played a role he's the guy in the shop that like is really creepy he's legitimately a psychopath that just <laughs> walked in and then he had to go back to the psych ward like right after that wow um, that's like, crazy shit like that. yeah those are good stories um uh, so yeah, I, I recommend that that documentary. Yeah, definitely worth checking out then. Yeah, I know. Um, I know there was another documentary. I see you got Midsummer back there. My girl, one of my girlfriend's favorite movies is Midsummer. Oh yeah, I loved it. I really loved it. That, see, that's another example of movies like The Shining, which are, you know, critically speaking, good. You know. Yeah. Um. Uh, and then my next question: What metal musician or band? that you have not worked with yet, which you'll love to work with? Huh. Metal musician or band that I would like to work with. Um, um, trying to think of, uh, well, I mean, I, I would really like to work and I don't know what that would look like, but I would love to work with uh, Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails. And awesome. uh, I don't know if it's necessarily nine, uh, metal, you know kind of industrial rock and sometimes tiptoes into pop a little bit too but um it's, I'm a it's real, heavy 
Yeah, I'm a real big fan of uh, Nine Inch Nails. Um, always was, especially, you know, uh, Downward Spiral era stuff. Um, but uh, really all of it. I've just always liked his his uh, musicianship and his kind of outlook on the industry. Um, I would love to work with him. Um, like I said, I don't know what the hell that would look like, but it would be fun. It would be an interesting uh, collaboration, I think. Uh, For sure. And then uh, my last question, uh, where do you hope to see yourself in 10 years? In 10 years, I would like, well, in one year less, I would like to see myself on tour um, because Jesus, uh, <laughs> Hopefully. We, uh, we had our first tour as a band booked right as COVID-19 became a thing, like whenever things started shutting down, uh, that was supposed to be with head PE and uh, that got postponed indefinitely. Um, so I, I would love to be able to get out and, you know, see people again and, and perform because um, really that's one of the things I love the most about being a musician and being in a band is performing, you know, and uh, that's really been taken away from us. You know, you can't perform in front of people anymore. Not right now, really, for the most part. There's here and there, there's a few places that you can do it, but largely you can't. So I really miss that. And uh, so immediately I would like to do that. Um, in 10 years, I mean, it's hard to say, like, really, it's not even that far out, like really, Within the next year, I would love to be, I want to do some festivals whenever those come back. You know, I don't know how long it's going to take us to be able to get to the point where we can do festivals again, where we can have large groups of people. But um, yeah, festivals, uh, tours, um, you know, uh, I would like to, I guess if we're projecting out 10 years, I don't know. I would like to be in a place where I feel like this band has done everything I wanted it to do, to have to tour and overseas and to have played festivals and uh, to have actually made some money. I know that's a crazy thing. And, you know, people are like, oh, it's not about the money. And it's not about money. Obviously, I've been doing this for, fuck, I don't know, a long ass time and haven't really made a dime, to be honest with you. You know, I've been on the billboard charts and still didn't make any fucking money. Um, so, uh, like, pretty high on the billboard charts, too. Like, had shit playing at Universal Studios, which is ridiculous, but still no money. Um, so obviously it's not all about the money, but goddamn, I'd like to be able to pay my bills and live off of making music. You know, I don't think that's too much to ask. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd like to be in a, to a point where, where I can make a living just making music. Um, so I would like to have said in 10 years, okay, I, I, I can make enough money to live making music and I can play overseas and I can tour and, and this band's a, well-known band and, and people appreciate us and we have respect um, of our peers and whatnot. Um, I think that's pretty good for 10 years. For sure. Yeah, lots to look forward to. How about you? Where do you want to be in 10 years? Um, well, same as you, hoping to make money with uh, doing interviews then and, and doing uh, YouTube stuff. Um, and hopefully a little bit more uh, filmmaking route because I'm going that route uh, in film school now. So hopefully more of that. Cool. For sure. So. Um, right on. Yeah, that's a cool. That's a cool pursuit. For sure. Yeah. Is there anything um, you would like to add to the interview? Um, I I wish I had something to add, but I don't really. Um. We don't have anything immediately coming up, so I don't have a whole lot to plug. Um, right. Of course, the album, whenever we're ready to release it, like I said, we've got three music videos um, that are almost done. One of them is done, and then two more that are being worked on. Um, and uh, all that shit should be coming out this coming year. But we don't have any release dates or anything yet. Um, so just stay tuned. You know, if you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube yet, please do. All this shit will be up on there. You know, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on all the fucking shit. So, you know, go at us, follow us, like us, do all those things. Um, you know, we appreciate the support always. And um, hope to see everybody out at a show sometime soon. For sure. And, uh, of course, if you follow them, then you'll be notified whenever you guys do release a new single uh, and or album. 
So um, I'll put everything in the description yeah. for everyone that wants to check it out. And I want to thank you so much for your time. All righty. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on. And uh, yeah, um, hope you uh, are successful in your ventures. Thank you. I've waited this long. Hell no longer awaits.